there are lots of adventures out there in the media for Star Wars. Books, movies, and tons of video games. A lot of these adventures are from the time before Disney took over the franchise and non-canonized what was known as the Extended Universe. But many of those adventures are still loved by fans. Today we are trekking into one of those adventures, featuring one of the most overpowered Force users to be attached to the name. Here is my review of Star Wars The Force Unleashed for the Nintendo Switch. The plot of this game takes place between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. You play as Starkiller, the secret apprentice of Darth Vader trained from childhood to be a weapon to hunt down Jedi. Not too different from the idea that Star Wars Rebels would have invented into the Inquisitors. But in the apprentice's training, you are betrayed by the Dark Lord and sent into a kind of exile, gathering up enemies to take down the Emperor that thinks you're dead. Now overall, I think the plot here is pretty neat. While it's no longer part of the overall timeline of the movies, The Force Unleashed was an interesting take on a massively overpowered Force user being trained by Darth Vader, as well as meeting with familiar faces and a tale of how the Rebel Alliance was originally formed. When we get to gameplay, this is a third-person action game with very light upgrade elements. As you go through each area, you will be slicing, tossing, and lightninging your way through loads of enemies and bosses. But let's first talk about which version this is. The Force Unleashed had two very different releases. LucasArts developed the PC, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3 versions that were significantly more graphically evolved than the version we got on the PSP, PS2, and Nintendo Wii. Essentially, the game was too far ahead for those three platforms, so the developer Chrome made the same game, but in a different engine and graphical style. The Switch version is based on that Wii, PSP, and PS2 release. The visuals aren't the only difference though. We have returning motion controls for the lightsaber and force abilities, the local multiplayer dual mode featuring 27 playable characters, and a good chunk of the campaign is different. The proxy boss was removed and replaced by five other boss encounters that did not appear in the main console version. We've also got stormtroopers that look more like clones than the original trilogy troopers. Some quick time events were modified into cutscenes, and we have loads more costumes that you can unlock with cheats for alternate characters. And that's one of the, my favorite parts of this version. Instead of being paid DLC, the dozens upon dozens of alternate character skins are just cheat codes and you have a much higher amount of those characters that were exclusive to not only the Chrome release, but the Nintendo Wii. From Isla Sakura and Count Dooku to the popular Legends character, Mara Jade Skywalker. And one last thing before we dive into progression. All of the Wii version cheats can be activated on the Switch version. From unlimited force energy to all of those costume character skins, you can activate them as soon as you get access to your ship. Though the big cheats like God Mode and Unlimited Force Energy do need to be reactivated if you close and reopen the game. But let's get to how you play through this adventure, which is a pretty linear action game. You wander around 3D areas, attacking enemies with a lightsaber and force powers, trying to get to the next area, destroying pretty much everything in your path. While Fallen Order did similar things in more recent years, The Force Unleashed was the first game that really let you loose with the force, letting you blow away not only enemies, but environments. Use a force push to watch things break and explode in front of you. Turn yourself into a force of gravity with objects and enemies floating around you helplessly until you unleash them all in an explosion. And the one thing Fallen Order hasn't done, unless the sequel gives Cal Kestis the ability to use force judgment, barbecuing everything around you with chaining force lightning. You can also upgrade those abilities through force points earned from downing enemies to make them stronger and much bigger with the effect you will slowly progress into an absolutely insane force of nature or do it quickly with the 1 million force point cheat code over and over, getting everything maxed out early and steamrolling through the entire campaign as an unstoppable Sith monster. And that's really what this game is about, having the power fantasy of controlling one of the most overpowered force users to come out of Star Wars. Watching yourself annihilate everything and everyone with ease, whether you're using cheat codes or not. Being able to just run through a room constantly shooting out lightning, destroying everyone before they can even lift a finger is an incredible feeling. And even more so when you're using those character skins like Obi-Wan Kenobi or Mara Jade. 
Now there is a bit more to the game than that. You'll have a lot of platforming and light puzzle solving in each area, be it taking down a number of enemies or catching a TIE fighter with the force and hurling it into a tractor beam generator. It is fairly inventive with what it does, at least for the time it originally came out. The boss fights are also part of their own age. You've got a lot of acrobatic tracking with the lightsaber combos and have to manage a boss duel by combining different attacks to break through their guard. Though quick time events were the big thing at the time. This was at the very end of the PS2 age when games like God of War and Resident Evil 5 were out. So every boss in this game will lose health and eventually put you in a QTE minigame. This could seem a little less amazing than what you'd find today, but it is a product of its time. As all of this comes together, we get a pretty decent amount of content in length. Being the Wii version, we get those extra levels to make the campaign a bit longer. And with that in mind, if you steamroll everything with cheat codes, you'll probably conquer the campaign in around six hours. If you play normally, expect to spend a good eight to nine hours. Now, before we get into presentation, let's go over the motion controls they adapted from the Wii version. First of all, this is only capable with two Joy-Cons. The right controller can be flicked for lightsaber combos, while the left can be flicked for force powers like the push. Though I will admit the tracking of different angles with the lightsaber doesn't work very well. It's okay for a novelty sort of thing, but nowhere near the best or easiest way to control the game. Next up is presentation, where a lot of people's criticisms are. The Nintendo Switch Force Unleashed is a smoothed over remaster of the Nintendo Wii port. As a direct port of the Wii version, it looks pretty good. No jaggies anywhere, and it looks identical, just upscaled and smoothed out. While some people may have expected a completely overhauled graphics engine, that's never been what Aspire's done with their Switch and PS4 ports of older Star Wars games. They've all just been smoothed out ports of the original games, so this is exactly what I expected. Now with performance, it's great. The Force Unleashed runs at a near constant 60 frames per second in and out of docked mode, and it really feels great with that smoothness. That's all I've got to say about presentation, so let's go into battery life. The original model gets a battery range of 2 hours and 54 up to 3 hours and 38. The Nintendo Switch Lite gets a range of 3 hours and 2 up to 4 hours and 2. The Red Boxer V2 2019 model gets a range of 5 hours and 57 up to 7 hours and 13. And the OLED model gets a range of 6 hours and 6 up to 7 hours and 31. In conclusion, The Force Unleashed returns to handhelds with the same mindless fun and different content that handheld gamers will remember from the days of the PlayStation Portable. Now on the downside, the boss fights didn't age incredibly well from that time's QTE focus and the motion controls are just okay. But if you're looking to relive the early days of Starkiller or annihilate stormtroopers with unstoppable powers as Mara Jade, it can still be a lot of fun to powerhouse through with cheats. Reviews to go rates Star Wars The Force Unleashed for the Nintendo Switch a 7.5 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.